Hi everyone, this is Eileen, and today I'm going to be doing a video review of these Jane Davenport watercolors. This is the, her neutral set of watercolors, and they're available at Michael's and I think online. I know for sure she also has one that's bright colors, which are more of like a basic watercolor set you would find. Um, like, um, more pigmented colors, I guess, kind of. And then I think she might have a pastel one also. And they all sell for $31.99, but if you go to get it at Michael's, you can use a 40% off coupon or whatever other coupons you have, which is really nice. Um, I These are really similar to the Prisma or Prima watercolors. I forget what they're called, but I'll leave a link down below to both of them. Um, I haven't actually tried the Prima ones. I think they're called Prima. I haven't actually tried them, but I got them as a present from one of my friends, and the tin of this is very similar. Um, and I think they're made by the same manufacturer, so I will have to check. But Jane Davenport, if you don't know her, she is an artist here on YouTube, and she also is on Instagram, I'm pretty sure. And she does a lot of very um, pigmented, bright drawings of girls, and she has her own line of art supplies at Michael's, which has a lot of cool things. A lot of it is quite expensive, but once again, if you have your coupon, you can figure out how to make things cheaper. So... As I said, this is her neutral set. It shows you the swatches of the colors on the back in little faces like that. And then um, let's open it up and I'll show you what the tin looks like. So in this video, I'm going to be opening and reviewing this palette and then this, there'll be a part two um, in this same video where I will be customizing this palette with some of my Winsor & Newton paints because I've seen how people do that and I think that'll be a good system for my traveling watercolors. So it comes in this nice gold box. I believe the other box of the brights is like a blue color, like a powder blue. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. And it comes in this thing. It says Jane Davenport, the Color Institute Neutral Palette. And it includes three primaries and a specially selected set of colors, which I believe is just what it says on all of them. It has this little drawing. This is the kind of um, characteristic of the things that Jane Davenport does. And then it has this little thing to make a color swatch. Now, this is kind of shiny paper, not watercolor paper. And I should also mention, these are student-grade watercolors made for, like, mixed-media artists, not people who are doing, um, like, super professional things to sell in galleries, I guess, sort of, because um, they don't provide any of the light fastness information like the Windsor & Newton paints do, but that's okay for what I'm doing. I just use these in my sketchbook. So it comes with all of these um, mixing areas. This is a metal tin. So it comes with two big wells here, four small wells, and then if you lift this metal piece with the paints on it out, there are also um, four wells underneath, which I don't know how often you would use that, but um, the colors that come in here, if you can see this, I'll adjust the focus a little bit. Give me one sec. The colors that come in here are mango, apple, and blueberry, and these are the um, primary colors, so you can mix all sorts of different secondary colors with those. Dove, unicorn, and raven, which are a gray, I believe this is a white, and black, or a very dark gray, I guess. Vitamin C, which is an orange color. Sand, which is a like sandy brown, kind of like an ochre, I guess. Um, buff, which is a pinky, um, peachy, yellowish tan. Spice, which is kind of a medium brown. Kiss me, which, or sorry, kiss kiss, which is a um, kind of like a grapefruit color, I guess, like a, um, a crimson-y coral and then cocoa, which is a brown. So I'm going to open all these up, and then I will do a little review of these, and then I will move on to showing you how I'm going to customize this little palette with my Windsor & Newton paints. So I'll be back as soon as I've opened these up. Alright, so I'm back. I've unwrapped all the paints, and while I was gone, I also set up this swatch um, sheet on mixed media paper in my sketchbook, and I just used the wrappers from the paints to set this up so that you can see what it would look like on something that isn't um, shiny, because this is like some shiny paper, and I don't think that'll be a very realistic look at the colors. So I'm just going to swatch them really quickly on here, starting with mango. I'll talk about the first two, and then I will fast forward the rest. So Mango is kind of a goldenish yellow, I guess I would say. It 
They feel similar to the Windsor and Newton paints, I think. Uh, more pigmented, maybe, just a bit, at least for that one. It's not quite enough water. I'm trying to put a similar amount of water in each of these. I can definitely tell that these won't be chalky, which is something that sometimes I worry about with um, cheaper or non um, things that aren't labeled as professional art things, like without any ingredient information um, or light fastness information, I don't really know about these. Alright, so those are my three primaries. I guess I'll just talk through these. Next we have Dove, which is the gray color. They show the texture of the paper really nicely, so that's a plus. I always like it when paints do that, but I think that's more of a personal opinion. I'll swatch the white, although I know you won't be able to see it. I know a lot of people say you shouldn't use your white watercolors. I use it to mix things um, occasionally, like sand colors, you know things I want to be a little more opaque, I'll use the white for, so I keep it in my palette. Alright, and now moving on to vitamin C. I'm The color um, of the label on this looks really similar to the color of the label for apple, but the paint looks different, so that's nice. That's definitely more of a brighter orange. And next, this is sand. I'm just using a Royal and Lang Nicole. I don't even know what size brush this is. Oh, it's a round four. So, thought that was a pretty average size. This is buff. This is a nice base for um, lighter skin tones, I would think. That's the main reason I chose this palette over the brights, because I thought the skin tones would be, it'd be nicer for mixing skin tones. More neutral, like nature landscapes. This is Spice. I actually really like this color. That's a very unique watercolor shade. Usually that's not something you see just in a pan. And then Kiss Kiss. This is kind of a burnt sienna, I guess, maybe? And I really like burnt siennas. I don't have mine in my Winsor & Newton palette anymore, which I'll show you in a moment, because I took it out to put some purple in there. Yeah, that's a nice color. And then we have cocoa. That's a really nice brown. All right, so now that we've got this swatch done, um, I got a little glue on that orange shade, which when I was gluing the pieces on, that's why there's a little white dot in the middle. But um, now I'm going to talk about how I'm planning on customizing this. Of course, now all my paints are wet, so we'll see how this goes. But I have here um, my, this is the Windsor & Newton set I'm talking about. It's the little pocket Cotman box. Um, I've taken all the paints out of it empty and I've used this for a couple years now so um, my paints are kind of a mess but there are some colors in here like the greens that I know I want and the blues so the blue that's in here I would say is more of an ultramarine um, than a cobalt so I'm gonna take all these out I guess and just try to set up some kind of 
uh, logical order of paint. And I'm going to be using um, that wall putty stuff, I think, to stick them down in the middle. And then, of course, after a while, they'll just eventually get glued with the paint. Yeah, this is really wet. All right, I'm going to do this, and then I will come back once I've gotten them in an order that I like. Okay, so I'm done making my set, and before we go, I will, of course, make a little swatch card for you. I have to wash my hands first because I have paint up under my fingernails, which is gross. But I was able to fit 14, um, no, sorry, 15, um, 13, um, non-neutral colors, 13, like, bright colors, and then eight neutrals. And the only thing that I learned that it might be, like, important if you plan on making a customized set in one of these little tins, um, is that you can't fit seven of the Jane Davenport paints in a row, but as long as you have one that's Winsor & Newton in that row, they fit fine. It's just that the Jane Davenport pans are slightly thicker, like, the walls of the pans are slightly thicker than the Winsor & Newton pans. But everything still closes up nice, it's good, it's heavier, of course, because it's got um, nine more colors in it, but you can totally make a very nice little set in here that you can use for traveling or for just all the time. Um, I have this little brush that was from my Winsor Newton set that doesn't fit in here anymore, which makes me a little sad. I could have put it in the middle. I guess I could probably slide it back here. We'll do that. It's not easy to get out, but so you can totally do that. It has a little thumb thing under here. You can paint on the go. I don't know whoever would use that, but it's there. So I'm just going to make a quick swatch chart and then I'll come back and show you before we end the video. Alright, so I finished my swatch chart and I did two coats of each color because the first time I did this I used too much water on each one. It wasn't a true representation of how intense the colors could be. So I'll just go through it really quickly. First we have Winsor & Newton Crimson, Jane Davenport Apple, Winsor & Newton Cadmium Red, the Jane Davenport Vitamin C, Jane Davenport Mango, Windsor Newton Cadmium Yellow, Windsor Newton Lemon Yellow, and that's my first row of warm colors. We have Windsor Newton Sap Green, Windsor Newton Viridian, I think that's how you say that, Jane Davenport Blueberry, Windsor Newton Intense Blue, Windsor Newton Ultramarine, and then we have Reeves Violet, and I need to refill the pan of it because the first time I did it, it cracked and it was kind of gross. So the pan's kind of almost empty, but that's what's going to be in there. Um, Jane Davenport Kiss Kiss, Jane Davenport Buff, Windsor Newton Yellow Ochre, and Jane Davenport Spice. These two are really super similar, so I don't think I really needed both, but there wasn't another color that I wanted to put in there, um, that wasn't similar to another color, so I just left them both. Jane Davenport Cocoa, Jane Davenport Dove, Jane Davenport Raven, and finally you can't see it, but it is there, and that is Jane Davenport Unicorn, which is the white tone. So, this is what my finished palette looks like, and I guess just as a closing, I would totally recommend the Jane Davenport paints. Um, I'm not sure that one set by itself would be good if you wanted to purchase both and maybe, like, combine them. Um, the, I mean the brights and the neutrals, because the brights doesn't include any neutrals at all besides black. But, um, I think this setup of using the Winsor & Newton paints and the Jane Davenport paints together is going to work really nicely for me and my art style. However, um, if I, you were picking between Jane Davenport and Winsor & Newton, I would definitely pick the Winsor & Newton Cotman palette as your starter and then maybe add some more colors later to your collection. Um, but that one just has a more, um, universal range of colors that you can use for painting, um, basic things. So... That is what I have to say. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video, and I will see you soon. I'm going to be doing a video of all of my watercolor supplies soon, because that's been requested. So I will see you then. Bye!